what to do about judgments. So what do you do when you feel like judging your partner? It's very tempting to indulge this impulse. First, you have to be convinced that judging isn't to your benefit, since the ego thinks it is. Are you convinced that love is more important than having your partner be the way you want him or her to be? Are you committed to love more than to your conditioning? Ego will opt out of relationship or try to change the relationship rather than choose love. But will you? Will you give in to the temptation to judge and remain separate? Or will you choose love? It's up to you to make this choice whenever a judgment arises. It's useful to see that the ego gets something from judging. It gets to feel superior, right, and separate. It takes pleasure in feeling this way. Notice that this pleasure is the payoff for judging. If there were no payoff, it would be easy to stop judging. Notice the self-righteousness and superiority you feel when you find something to criticize in someone. This is the payoff that's exchanged for love. Is it worth it? You need to decide because you can't have both. Once you're convinced that love is worth passing up this payoff, you'll have to catch the judgments before they're spoken. You'll have to be aware enough to notice that conditioning has been triggered and that a choice needs to be made to give the conditioning your attention or not. If you give it your attention, the result will probably be a judgment. If you don't, the result will likely be love. Even if you don't feel loving in the moment that you turn away from judging, your partner will appreciate your act of love and your relationship will benefit from the accumulation of these small acts of love. In time, you'll come to see how worthwhile it is to choose love instead of judgment, and doing this will become automatic. Here's an exercise that will help you become free of your judgments. Exercise. Practice letting judgments be. Practice just letting the judgment be there without doing anything about it. What's that like? This may feel uncomfortable and even unrewarding at first. Your ego will struggle and squirm and try to find a way around this. Eventually, letting judgments be will pay off in love but you may need to just trust this at first while this habit becomes more established. Notice what happens when you just let a judgment be there. Does the ego come in and try to talk you out of just letting it be? Does it offer more concealed judgment or one that sounds a little nicer? Do feelings come up that create pressure to speak the judgment? What kinds of feelings most often arise? Can you just let them be there too, without doing anything about them? They're also part of your conditioning. Although you're responsible for what you do with your conditioning, you aren't responsible for the fact that it's there. It's just the programming you were given. Seeing this will help you detach from the conditioning and not act on it. What if you send love to this conditioning and to the ego, which so desperately wants to act on it? Who is this you that is able to lovingly be with this conditioning? Its essence, the you that is capable of love and a loving relationship. Nothing is ever lost in choosing love. Your judgments never worked anyway. They only created anger, hurt, and separation. When you see the truth of this, it becomes much easier to choose love over judgment. Honesty is not the best policy. Judgments aren't the only thing we shouldn't share with our partner. The ego's thoughts in general aren't necessarily useful to share. Honesty is not the best policy if that honesty comes from the ego. In addition to judgments, 
the ego is full of opinions, complaints, and half-truths, and sharing these with our partner can only bring him or her into the egoic state of consciousness. And often what the ego thinks is just plain hurtful. Most people are conditioned to believe that being honest is necessary and good for relationships, when in fact it's often very detrimental. If being truthful means expressing the ego's truth, then it's better to not be truthful or to just keep quiet. The ego's truth is not the truth, and speaking it just keeps us identified with the ego and drags others into ego identification. For instance, sharing what you don't like about your partner is just hurtful and doesn't serve. What's the point in telling your partner you don't like the way he or she smiles, or the way he or she dresses, or the way he or she drives, or the way he or she talks to the dog? It only creates tension between you. Sharing such information is generally an attempt, although an ineffective one, to change the other person to fit your preferences. If something you say will result in contraction rather than love, then it's better to not say it, even if it's true to you. Choose love rather than the ego's truth. The ego chooses to speak its truth instead of choosing to be loving, because doing so gives it a feeling of being right. But the feeling of being right doesn't actually feel good, certainly not like love feels. Even if your partner asks your opinion about how he or she looks, it never serves to be honest if you don't like something, especially if it isn't something that can be changed. It's one thing to say, I like that dress better than the other one, and quite another to say, I think you look a little fat in that. One expresses a preference about a dress, and the other expresses an opinion about the person's body, which can't easily be changed. Perhaps she says, Do you think I've gained a little weight? Even if you think she has, Find a way to make her feel good instead of agreeing with her. For example, you're as beautiful as ever. Or if she says, are you mad at me? You might say, no, I'm mad about you. It feels good to say something nice, and the other person will appreciate your sweetness. You will have brought her into essence and out of her critical mind. What a gift. When the ego speaks, it results in contraction, bad feelings, and possibly tension and conflict in the relationship. When essence speaks, on the other hand, people feel good, they relax, they feel love, and they give love. Paradise is restored. When essence speaks, it expresses appreciation, approval, acceptance, compassion, patience, and love. Take as much time as you want. I love how you do that. It's fine just the way it is. It's not that easy to do. You're so sweet. Essence compliments and uplifts rather than judges. This is the difference between heaven and hell on earth and in relationships. Love is much more important than honesty. Honesty doesn't serve relationships when it creates contraction and tension. When contraction and tension are present, you can be sure that the ego's truth and not essences is being spoken. Let the results of your words be what determines whether you speak them or not. Speak only what brings harmony and love to the relationship and forego what the ego has to say. That's a much better policy than honesty. The Gift of Acceptance Some people are easier to love than others, and they're the ones, therefore, who experience a lot of love. They experience it both within themselves and coming to them from others. What's their secret? Amazing good looks? No. Stunning personalities? No. Money and power? No. 
Their secret is none of the things we assume will make us more lovable. Their secret is that they love, and by that I mean they accept others the way they are. Isn't that when you feel loved, when you feel accepted rather than judged, which is the usual way egos interact with each other? Acceptance is the opposite of judgment and the antidote to judgment, and acceptance brings us the experience of love. What is the experience of love? It is the experience of accepting and being accepted, the experience of relaxation, of being able to just be, without struggling and striving to be any different than we are, or requiring that others be different than however they are. That's what we all want, to just be able to relax and be okay just the way we are, and to be okay with others just the way they are. When someone gives us this gift of acceptance, we love them. What a gift! It's a gift you would never reject, and hopefully one you will return, because returning it, giving others this gift, brings you the experience of love. Loving and accepting others feels good. It is its own reward. It isn't even necessary for others to love and accept you in return because it's enough to just feel love and acceptance for others. The ego loves or tries to love in order to get love or something else it wants. But this kind of love isn't really love. It's more like being nice, and it may not entail acceptance at all, but something more like tolerance for the purpose of getting something. This is a very different experience than love. Tolerating people is better than not tolerating them, but it's not the same as enjoying them, which can only come from true acceptance. You accept others because you appreciate the unique expression of life that they are. What amazing things these human forms are, and all the different personalities. When we can just let people be the way they are, it's such a relief, for us and for them. Allowing people to just be is loving them, and this appreciation and allowing comes from essence. It's how essence feels about life and every one of its creations. What makes someone lovable? Certainly their acceptance of us makes them lovable, but what also makes them lovable is their acceptance of themselves. People who accept themselves who are gentle and kind to themselves, are also gentle and kind to others. We see these qualities in them, and we relax. And when we relax, we return to essence. People who love and accept themselves are lovable because they reflect essence, and that's what we all really want. Not someone to do our every bidding and match our every fantasy. What we really want is to be with someone who knows how to love, because our deepest desire is to love. Therefore, we're drawn to those who know how to love. They are our teachers, the way-showers in this world. And this is our destiny as well, to be a place of refuge, where egos dissolve, and all that's left is the love that we are. <laughs>